Hello, welcome to the Friday, January 3rd, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. As I mentioned in my last podcast in January, we are going to do again the Raspberry Pi challenge. If you find any inaccuracy in any of the podcasts, drop me a message and you'll be entered into a drawing for a Raspberry Pi. This does in particular include me using 2019 instead of 2020. Of course, pretty sure I did it uh, correct just about uh, 30 seconds ago. Xavier came across some interesting new ransomware and virus total. It appears to be sort of a prototype at this point. It's not a completely functional, but what's sort of different about it is that the ransomware actually uses Node.js. Node.js, of course, is a JavaScript interpreter at its core, and the actual ransomware, as a result, is written in JavaScript. Of course, this just follows sort of the general trend in software development using JavaScript for everything. So why not for ransomware as well? Well, and usually I don't really mention a lot of the sort of point of sales credit card breaches because, well, uh, usually not a lot of new about them, but we have a little bit interesting one with the Landry's uh, restaurant chain. At first, this looks like, well, any other sort of restaurant point of sales breach, malware infected the point of sale system, and then whenever a waiter or waitress uh, did swipe a credit card, a copy of the information was sent to the bad guys. What differentiates this breach from some of the other breaches is that at first it looks sort of like Landry's did some of the things that should prevent this kind of breach in that for their credit card terminals, they did use end-to-end -end encryption. So what usually happens there is the credit card data gets encrypted on the reader itself and then transmitted to the payment processor. So the actual point of sales computer never sees the raw credit card data. But what happened here with Landry's is that they had two different kinds of systems. They had point of sale systems that were supposed to be used for charging credit cards. And they had a second kind of system that was just used to enter the order. But what apparently happened was that uh, these systems got infected. And sometimes uh, the waiter or waitress did swipe a credit card on the wrong system, which then of course got stolen. I think it's a little bit comparable to people that, for example, enter their password instead of a username by mistake. And then, of course, that password ends up in the clear in various databases or logs. I'm not 100% sure what kind of technical solutions there are to prevent this, either encrypt all the terminals or maybe in cases where you, for example, need a magnetic stripe card to actually log into the terminal. I've seen that sometimes done in restaurants where you sort of make sure that it is correctly formatted, not a credit card that's being swiped there. Well, and uh, today I have uh, something a little bit different and special given that this is sort of the last podcast I have for the holiday weeks in that I have here Mr. Kringle at SCOTUS uh, personally with me to talk a little bit about KringleCon and the SANS Holiday Hack Challenge. So Ed, can you please tell us a little bit about uh, this particular project and how our listeners can participate in the Holiday Hack Challenge? Sure. It's about 20 to 25 people that work on this thing year round, and we release it at the holidays. And it's essentially SAN's gift to the cybersecurity community. It's a bunch of different challenges. They're, they're not all offensive. I mean, there's some offensive challenges, but there's also a lot of cyber defense challenge work in it, a lot of defer challenges, some ICS stuff. It's really cool. I encourage all of your listeners to really check it out. You can get it for free. It's all free at holidayhackchallenge.com. And this year, we really did try to focus on a lot of cyber defense and analysis challenges. There's, uh, there's a lot of different tools that you, you use while you're working your way through the challenges. Um, some of the challenges are really easy. They're for people who are brand new to cybersecurity. And some of them are really complex. Um, and we allow you to find the easy ones uh, and find the hard ones. So you can kind of tell, you know, based on your own level, uh, what you're working on. But we, we have challenges that are associated with Deep Blue CLI fantastic tool for doing analysis of Windows event logs. 
We have challenges that uh, have you use Rita to de- detect some beaconing of malware. So this is, I mean, perfect for, for Stormcast listeners. We have a challenge on the event uh, log query tool, uh, which is great. And, and just a whole bunch of other challenges and all kinds of different things. Uh, there's a lot of web app stuff in there. So, Johannes, you'd love that. And again, it's all free. You just go to holidayhackchallenge.com. You register for it. And then you're dropped into this like little video game environment. There's custom music that plays. You know, we commission music from some of the best musicians uh, in the cybersecurity community. And uh, so there's some holiday music. You can chat with other players. People work in teams or you can work solo. It doesn't matter. And there's some prizes too. We have uh, seven randomly chosen prizes, which people will get a little bit of of holiday hack swag for that. Um, But the best of the best, the top prize is a free SANS class. There's an on-demand class as well as a live SANS class that are the top prize. Pretty cool. So that's really great. Now, people aren't really just... uh left uh, there by themselves. You also added some talks at uh, the GringleCon or where you can actually learn about some of the topics that uh, the challenges are built around. That's absolutely right. Yeah. So Santa Claus has a virtual conference that is associated with the Sans Holiday Hack. And like you said, he calls it KringleCon. And uh, we've got about 15 talks at KringleCon. And the cool thing, these talks are fairly short. They, they tend to run 10, 12, 18 minutes long, but you can watch a talk. And based on what you learn in the talk, you can then apply it in the actual challenge itself. So it kind of reinforces it. Oh, and another really cool thing, Johannes, I think you're going to love this. There are two challenges in this that are associated with machine learning. One is an offensive use of machine learning, and the other is a defensive use of machine learning. So, uh, you know, if you want to dip your toe into the pool of, you know, machine learning and how to use it in cybersecurity, Santa Claus has two challenges for you at uh, the Sans Holiday Hack Challenge. It's it's really cool stuff. As far as I know, this is the first cyber range slash uh, capture the flag event that has machine learning integrated into it. Um, so I think people are going to love that. So really cutting edge and everything sounds great. I heard a lot of good reviews like on Twitter when you're checking up. A lot of people, I think, neglected their holiday gift unwrapping duties and such just for <laughs> uh, having more time to play with uh, Kringle Con and the Holiday Hack Channel. So yeah. again, uh, where do people register and it's all free, right? That's right. It's all free. Last year, we had 17,500 people play. This year, we're hoping for 20,000. I really hope that your listeners will just check it out. I mean, you might as well log in. Give us five or 10 minutes and I think you're going to have some fun. Just go to to holidayhackchallenge.com and you can register there. Excellent. And I'll add a link to the show notes. So thanks, Ed, for joining me here and uh, for talking about uh, this real great, great gift here to the community uh, that you made available. Hey, thanks, Johannes. Really appreciate it. So that's it for today. And by the way, recordings of the webcast from Tuesday about uh, the Citrix uh, vulnerability are available now. You can find them on YouTube. You can find them on the SANS webcast page among the archives. And I'll also add a link to the show notes. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.